much love and peace to go around. So much love for the whole world on a beautiful day. You're watching Hello Nigeria. You're watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. And in case you are just tuning in, you've not missed a lot. The show is actually just starting. I'm not alone today. I'm joined by Wemimo Adewuni of 99.3 Nigeria Info. You hear her voice every morning on your way to work on the radio when she's dishing out the news and analyzing <laughs> everything on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Thank you for joining us. Good to be here again. I'm always excited to have you. Because, <laughs> I am too. You know, I, I like to see the 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 professionalism that oh, you bring shit. to this work. Thank you. And I'm very excited about today's banter. Really? Yes, I am. So I'll just go straight into the mm. meat of today's okay. conversation. Now, the Nobel laureate Professor Wole Shoyinka um, has said that his generation of older Nigerians have failed the country. Shoyinka said this when he appeared on a BBC program yesterday. The professor said that the dreams people of his generation had about the country had not materialized, largely due to greed and corruption on their part. When he was asked by the anchor Zena Badawi, has your generation of older Nigerians failed the people? The Nobel laureate replied, yes, I believe so. I compare today with dreams and aspirations we had when we all rushed home after studies abroad. We considered ourselves the Renaissance people that were going to lift the continent to world standards, competitors anywhere. It hasn't happened. Well, um, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Do you share the it, it, same it sentiments? Oh, come with... on. Don't we all? Don't we all? So while I truly respect Professor Wale Shoyinka, and I'll say that maybe himself and a handful of others have tried their bit in making the things look better for us. But has his generation ruined things? Yep, yes. So how he described this is like they climbed the ladder up and then rolled up the ladder after them and let the next generation just groping and not knowing what to do. Look at the educational sector. You hear them telling us, so in our days, I mean, I was speaking with some of that generation yesterday and they were saying in our time, we had a protest in, my, in their university then over the fact that um, the menu was changed from chicken to turkey without consulting the student union. I'm like, you know, they had meal tickets. Education was good. Most of them schooled here. It was easy to travel abroad if you were qualified I mean, if you to, to study. I you saw how much the tickets cost, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Teaching. Exchange rate was good. Things were good. Agriculture was good. We had a lot of money flowing around. You know, we had all these things going on. Maybe at the start, you know, the fight for independence, I give them kudos for that. There was a lot of work going into that. But after the founding fathers, I don't know where it all went wrong, but a lot of greed came into the system and everyone just seemed to feel, oh, there's a lot going around, let's just share all the money, you know? And then we ruined things so badly that unfortunately for this generation, we now see that, oh, so they know how to steal. Let's learn a bit more. So when we talk about the Yahoo Yahoo guys, we see a lot of these issues going on. Young people can see that the generations before them have stolen a lot. So they're also trying to put, so this culture of just take your own, take your divide share, national divide cake. our rule. We, we have a mindset of everybody cater to yourself, take cater to yourself. your pocket and your family. Take and that's what's happening. Now I had a conversation with a former governor in Nigeria and I asked him what he thought at the time, the Not Too Young to Run campaign had just started. And I asked him what his thoughts were. And he laughed and said we were a joke and that our generation wasn't ready for governance. You know? what, what does it even mean by that? So I was going to ask, you know, there are many people that say, oh, the, the older generation pledged our common wealth and we are at the place that we are now because of the way things were in their hands, because mm. of the way they mismanaged our resources. But there's another school of thought that says even our generation is not ready for leadership. Our we were mentored now. Okay. We were mentored. So this is what mentorship does. It's either good or bad. We were mentored. So while I wouldn't say that all young persons are not ready, of course we are. I know responsible young persons. So we're talking about the Yahoo Yahoo people, and I was talking with Esther some days ago to say it's not actually impossible for a 20-year-old to work and get money to buy Benz if you work hard at it. So it's, we're not dull at in this generation. We're really so we smart. Are. We are pretty, pretty smart. But the thing is, unfortunately, you know, children learn from what they see. So our generation has learned 
so many bad habits from the generation before ours, and we have a lot of unlearning to do. So how do we, how do we now start with this unlearning? How do we incorporate, um, how do we prepare our young people? Because what we find is we are a microwave generation. We want mm. everything done quickly. Technology has taken over our minds. And not just technology, the fact that we don't want to put in the work. Some people, you know, some young people don't want to put in the work. You get into an industry overnight, you want to quote unquote blow. Mm. So there's an, an expectation of, there, an overnight success. We don't understand the concept Taking of delayed it, gratification. Going a process. Exactly. There's nothing like a process. There's nothing like delayed gratification. Mm. I want what is mine and I want it now. now or I want so, it in yesterday. Exactly. So how do we now incorporate all this that you're talking about, this preparedness into the minds of this current generation? Again, it comes back to mentorship. So if you've learned it a bad way, you will learn it. And while a lot of people in that generation have set very bad examples, we also have some who have set good examples. Like I started with, I respect Professor Wale Shoinka. I see the things he does. I see the integrity with which he speaks. I see a few other people like that. And I choose to learn those good habits. So what I do on social media, for instance, if you listen to me in the mornings, I mentioned that while you're going through social media, I don't know what you learn. I look at the lives of people who inspire me and who I see are hardworking and inspire me to show that it's possible to get it done. And I want to be like these people, so I model myself after them. So instead of modeling yourself after people who have ruined the whole thing and they are confessing now that they have, again, if we have a strong structure where when people do bad things, they go to jail. So the previous generations, if they've messed up, if someone has stolen money, how many of them were convicted? Someone even made a very good example, said when we convict criminals who have stolen our monies, we shouldn't just let them stay in prison. Listen to this idea. Someone said, create a prison that looks like a museum. So uh, ex-presidents that stole our monies, put them in that kind of museum. Give them work to do. Let them be working from those prisons and then make, make it glass. So schools can bring children on excursion. Wow. And then say, see, this was the Nigerian president from 2019, blah, 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 and he's in prison because he stole. Yes, we would sit up. So let's revamp our prison system, make it a museum, showcase uh, punishment, let people understand that there is, uh, when you do something, there is a consequence. Exactly. So let Nigerians be able to see, because we don't see people getting punished, we see people, many more people getting away with it, more people are emboldened to do the wrong so things. So that means you're of the opinion that we should employ more of the carrot and stick approach. So yes. when we see, and also like in situations where we see people doing good, because they say we shouldn't applaud people, good should be the default, but unfortunately, no, it's not. there's not a default, it's not a default. So when we see people doing good, we should encourage Celebrate and them. applaud them. Yes. And when we see people doing... Make a showcase do. of them, let people learn. Let young children see the examples. So if you are doing wrong and you're an elderly person, you know, and you're in a museum, and young people can see, ah, see the fall from you know, grace to grass, it teaches them a lesson you can't learn in Speaking school. Speaking of our prison system, there's still so much that needs to be done mm. there. You know, with regards to rehabilitation, some of these people serve their time, and when they're done with, you know, serving and they come back into the society, the question is, how are they reintegrated back into the society? Mm. What skills have they learned? Yeah. I would never forget, you know, the story of the Bali Nine. The world felt, you know, the world reached out to mm. them in Indonesia, and we're, we're hoping and praying and pleading with the government not to kill them, because they've made mm. wonderful things of their lives. Mm. One of them had become a painter and his artwork was sold around the world, you know. So lots of them had come out better than they were when they went into the Unfortunately, prison. we set a bad example with our prison service. A senator who's been convicted since last year is in prison right now and is also sponsoring a motion in the Senate currently. He's in prison. That's a bad example to set. So someone who is in prison is receiving salaries from the Senate, is sponsoring a motion from prison, that's a bad example to set. Why is it still being paid? Why has ANEC not set up a, a, a rerun for his post in the Senate? They're saying the Senate has not written to them to say his uh, seat is vacant and then hold a by-election. The Senate is also not writing to ANEC to say this guy has been convicted and is in jail. So there's bad precedence. If we want to change anything, we have to start uh, laying the right examples. All right, before we wrap up this conversation, I'd like us to make reference to a conversation we heard, had yesterday mm. with um, Emmanuel Oyewale. He was here. Um, we saw, you know, we're still talking about the older generation having wrecked things for us. And a statement has gone viral, one mm. made by the Minister of Labor and Employment, oh, Dr. Gosh. Chris Ngige. Now, he said in an interview that Nigerian doc Nigeria has enough hands and he's not bothered about the doctors that are migrating. And if they're leaving the country, that's good for us because we are can work. Them. Exporting them, they hmm. can work and send hard currency back to Nigeria to and build, build up clinics. Uh, it, it went as far as saying that they build clinics. 
and then buy equipment that even government hospitals cannot, cannot maintain. afford. So how did that, how did that hit you when you Irresponsible. saw it? Irresponsible. That's the only word that came to my mind. It wasn't just what he said. It was how he said it. It was Very, reclining. So the same way I was sitting, so much effrontery. It wasn't even confidence. Such effrontery to say, I'm not bothered. How can you say we don't have enough? The WHO standard for doctor to ratio, uh, patient ratio is one doctor to, to 600, seven, 600 yeah. patients. In Nigeria, we have one doctor to 5,000 patients. And a minister of labor and productivity, who is also a medical doctor, that is, uh, who is also a medical doctor, sits confidently and says, we have enough doctors. We, are, we have so much that we're exporting. These are the issues that we're talking about. These are the issues that we will continually, to talk, continually talk about until we see the change that we want. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.